What is up guys, more OUPL missed this game today, this was like, they played really early and I was still asleep and we have Rory vs Tricking here, Tricking is on Blunder's team which is the Twin Leaf Thunders and I think the other team is called the Topson Noctowls managed by Poek if I recall correctly I forgot the second manager but yeah we will get right into this see interesting uh, potential in life of a Sash Mammoth Slam which is probably a lead from Tricking but yeah Roddy leads out with Good Ninja and Roddy can either go bring this down to the Sash if it's Sash Mammo or he can get up a spike here or like just hide it if he doesn't have Water Shurin. We see it's a uh, Protean Greninja, he gets up a spike and the Mammoth went and gets up the rock. So now the Greninja is weak to Ice Shot which, make, which makes Roddy probably want to switch out. He goes into a Salus Dealer and Tricking gets a lucky crit here which sucks for Roddy. I assume he's gonna go for Protect to get some health here. Yeah, and Tricking just switches into Venus or breaking potential Leech Seed. And since the Protect failed, he can go for Protect again and get more health back. And I think Tricking goes for... Um, yeah, he goes for HP Fire here. And now it has the potential of uh, Rodri going to the t on the HP Fire. So I think Tricking predicts that, goes for Giga and gets it wrong, and Rodri gets some chip damage with a heavy slam. And he can go for Protect to get more leftovers, but he decides to go hard into t Because he knew that uh, Venus probably goes for HP Fire on that turn, so that was played really well. I assume this would be Banta from Rodri's side, so Crunch is a 2 KO on Venus. So Venus can't do really do much, because like... You can't really heal much with Synthesis. Gigurian only has around 40% to Tita, Synthesis can't really heal. And if he switches out and uh, Rory goes for Pursuit, that's also bad for Tricking. So he decides to stay in, takes the Crunch, does 45. Heals something back with Gigurian, does 41. But yeah, Tita to it kills this. It's not like Tricking has good switching to Bandit Crunch, like his Crunch resist is a Greninja, which would take like a lot. Especially with his Spike up. So yeah, he sucks up his Mega Venus, so brings in his Greninja, and now he can fire off, um, if he's Ash Gun, like he can fire off a Hydro Pump and like I don't even know if Rory can avoid tricking get his Ash form. But yeah, if he's uh, Spikes, he can also go for Spikes if he's Protein. And like Rory basically has to pick his fodder here. Decides to keep the Banter as it's still pretty nice to beat that Mew later on in the game as that Mew's gonna be annoying because it was Medicham. Decides to stack off the Landris as. He has two ground resists basically for Mammoth Swine and Telestida is a ground resist that beats Mammo better when we won because uh, Landros is weak to eye so I kind of get this play second the Lando. And we see it's not protein and Tricking gets up his... Uh, hits the Hyper Pump with the Landros, gets his Battle Bond and rolls into Ash, Ninja and Rodri can send out his Coco, or, okay sends out his own Greninja. Yeah I don't know why I said Coco because Coco would uh, die. Um, Coco outspeeds no regular Grand, but it does not speed Ash Grand. I think it should die after Rocks through Hydro Pump, Spikes Hydro Pump, maybe even before Rocks. But yeah, this um, bring this Greninja in makes me think that Rory has something to hit opposing Grand, which would be U turn a low kick. So like Tricking's, I don't know what Tricking is gonna do here. But yeah, he switches out, he wants to save his Ash Gun because he can put in a lot of work. He goes in the Heligo and we see it is physical Greninja and goes for low kick. There's a lot because the Heligo is bad at defenses and we see it's life orb. So Greninja resists power gem because it's fighting type at the moment. The Heligo can either go for T-Bolt or Sludge Rave. T-Bolt is like probably the play because it hits Salus Dealer which is like potential switch into Sludge Rave. And yeah, Tita might get to killed after Rocks too so we will see what happens here. Yes. Tricking goes for Scarf t bolt and the Greninja 2 hit KOs, like, attacks again, goes for low kick. Picks up the Nihiligo, but the Greninja dies to rocks now if it switches out, and it's enraged to die from Ice Shot, so I don't think it's worth to save this, yeah. Rowdy just sucks off his Greninja, as it's the life of Mammoth, so picks up the kill, and he can go into Medicham, but the Mew is pretty obvious here, so we will see if he doubles out into... Uh, Tyranitar, or he can just go for a crit, I guess. It was a bit too risky. Yeah, he had no reason to double out. This way, he forces the Mew to go for Softball or Roost. It's a high jump kick off with a spike. The Mew is definitely forced to heal up here. And I think we're gonna see the Bantar come out here. And Hard Willow Whisping, that would have been a really good play by Trigging's part, but he just goes for Softball. And I think this teacher is forced to click Crunch here. Like, it's the best play. He doesn't have resist for that. But yeah, the Mew outspeeds the teacher. And a Bandit Crunch does 52, so that's like a bold Mew probably. He checkmated him really well. 
and you can probably spam knockoff or softball. Like knockoff would be nice to get rid of the band, I feel. But that was a higher roll, got 56 uh, there. Like if the Mew knocks off the band, it lifts another hit. Is what I'm trying to say here. But he just decides to go for softball. The Mew's not really hitting much because like it does more than 50, and it's also sand up. Sand is like making it so Mew doesn't gain anything from leftovers. And we got the defense drop, so this next crunch is gonna do a lot. Brings the Mew down really close to dying to 2% after Sand. Oh, never mind, Sand runs out, so it's back at 14, and he has to go for a knockoff to pick off this T Tar. So he doesn't run Psychic on his Mew, which is interesting, because, like, his ways of dealing with Toxapex is a Mammoth Sign, which cannot really switch in on Toxapex, because it gets Scarlet, and his other way is flinching down with Greninja, I guess. So, like, I don't know how I feel about knockoff on this team, but. Maybe Roderick doesn't really use Toxic Packs. I don't know, I haven't looked into his replays. Maybe that's why, as to why he would run knockoff of a Psychic. But yeah, it obviously worked out here. As if he had Psychic, he wouldn't be able to hit the Cheetah with knockoff there and pick it off. And now he's gonna go Coco or Medicham, I assume. As his Mew isn't doing much, I think he can sack off the Mew. And then basically get a kill with Greninja as Roddy goes for Ice Punch. Yeah, he goes into Greninja and Dark Pulse should get a kill here. Besides, the like Dark Pulse doesn't get a kill because there's a type of Coco, but like Dark Pulse is free, it can't miss, and Coco still takes a lot from Specs. Dark Pulse from Ash Green, so it still takes like 40% or 38 maybe. Oh my lord, it takes 56. Okay, I miscalculated that completely. My head calc is not on point. Dude, Ash Green is so strong if it gets up to form. So yeah, Coco actually gets to a kill, but. It's Unless it's Scarf Coco, but he scouts for Scarf. I don't think the Coco revealed anything yet. And it's Coco. Um, he turns out on the Mammoth Swine. I don't think there's a Scarf. I think it's Magnet. Oh, Z move. Like, I, we didn't see Z move on Rory's team yet. I could have been Z move Lando. He just checked that off, so we don't know that. And yeah, you turn out into Medicham probably. And he gets a kill here with HJK, I assume. His Ice Shadow does a lot. Yeah, hits his high jump kick. And yeah, this is gonna come down close. Celestila can potentially win this for Rory, but there's also Celestila on Tricking's side, so it's gonna come down to Celestila Wars. But yeah, Tricking uh, Celestila is still at full. He's gonna set Medi or. I think Medi or Coco. I think he's gonna set Medi, yeah. To a Water Shuriken. So Tricking doesn't wanna risk missing. I don't know, he could have Dark Pulse there. Oh yeah, Water Shuriken was, so he doesn't take any Bullet Punch damage, but I don't think Bullet Punch would have done much. Oh, Water Shuriken is so in case the Scarf Coco. Yeah, Water Shuriken makes sense in case the Coco is Scarf, so he cannot get revenged by that. So he's forced into Cell Stealer here. And he can go for Leech Seed to get some health back on the opposing side of Stealer. And he missed, actually he didn't miss, okay. I thought he missed, because I was like skipping through his replay early and I knew that Rory got a little bit hacks against him in the ending. Um, okay, so the Stealth Steeler is going to be healthy. The more leech seed and more leftovers. You see Tricking has Fire Blast, so maybe it's an offensive Stealth Steeler. If you see Fire Blast does um, a critical hit of 65, so yeah, that's the hex that I was talking about. And we will see if Roddy has Flamethrower Fire Blast on his own, he has Flamethrower, which is 42. So that crit was kind of annoying. It would have been at around a bit above health, half. Like it would have been way healthier. It would have been around here, maybe at 60% health. Without that crit and no protect and leech sheet. Like he would have gotten even more health back. Like he would have been at 70 or 80 now. But he decides to go on a Coco here. I don't know if he predicted the. I don't know what he predicted here. He decided to suck it off. He didn't want to. Yeah, he didn't want to let the Celestia take. Fire Blast there, and this way he can go for Protect again to get more leftovers, because, um... Does he have Rocks up or does he only have Spikes up? The Celestia is in the way, so I can't see. I, see. I think he only has a Spike up, so... So we see it's Offensive Celestia, since he got the Special Attack Boost from Fire Blast there. I think there's no Rocks on the side, so I don't really know what that second Coco did there. Because, like, if there was Rocks up, I would understand it. Because then the Celestia, you can go for Protect if this switches out, it's dead to Rocks. Yeah, but there's no rocks, so he can go Greninja on the Protect here. If he leaves, that's a really cool play, but he just goes for Protect, and he's gonna go for Protect again to get more leftovers on back. 
As the Grinja locks itself into Dark Pulse, doesn't want to risk missing a pump as Dark Pulse should do like 50% to this, maybe even more. Yeah, that's 44, wow. There is a max for Death Shadow Steel, I assume. Because that ate out really well, good lord. And yeah, it's kind of 50 50 between Protect and. Let's see it again. But I think it's just gonna Protect here. As Tricking went into Shadow Steel, did he make the play and Leech Seed again? Okay, then that would have been pretty nice for him. I think he could have won then. I mean, it's still not over, but if he dodges a Fire Blast, he can win. I assume the Shadow Steel does faster. Okay, it's Z move. Is it Inferno Overdrive? Okay, it's Super Sonic Sky Strike. So he predicted the Protect there. That's 6%. So they basically just cancel out the leftovers. And he hits his Fire Blast. So yeah, since his offensive Shadow Steel is obviously faster than his Death one and. Tricking picks up the win, but that was a 50-50 at the end. If he did see the day, he could have won. And also that Fire Blast crit was a bit annoying, but yeah, it was a close one. Since uh, Tricking won this game, Blender's team is up 4 and uh, 1 versus the Top Zone Noctals. They are managed by uh, Tokyo and Poek. Right, right, right. And... I recorded live the Poké TG Gamer game as Lighthouse, I think I already uploaded before this video. And what else did I record? Stay tuned for OST Finals. I'm gonna probably upload this after OST Finals, I'm not sure yet. Um, yeah, there is another game that I missed yesterday, which was the Psychic Mutes game. I'm not sure if I'm gonna record a replay of that. But yeah, thank you guys for watching and peace out. Hope you all enjoy it.